Let's talk about the most natural and efficient way to increase the saturation of your images without going ugly or any of that pixel banding or pixelation in no time. Also at the end of the tutorial, I'm gonna give you a preset that will allow you to do the same in seconds and it's all non-destructive. Also along the tutorial, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks that might or might not enlighten you subliminally. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in the funny world of Photoshop and this is one of the photos that are downloaded using the Pixels Photoshop plugin that allows you to search for free stock photos from inside of Photoshop. All the images are free, the software is free, everything is free. Go ahead and download it if you want to. Again, they have not paid me by the way. Alright, so the first thing that you might want to do, create an adjustment layer of selective color. Okay, selective color. Now, before you do anything, let's quit this for a moment. Before you do anything, just remember three things. What are those three things? CMY, RGB. All I want to say is, and all you have to remember right now, remember this, write it down somewhere, note it down in your brain, write it down in Evernote, do anything but remember this. Cyan is the opposite of red. Magenta is the opposite of green. And yellow is the opposite of blue. How to remember this? You know CMY, Kate? You know RGB. So CMY, opposite of RGB. C is the opposite of R, M is the opposite of G, and Y is the opposite of B. Cyan, magenta, yellow. Red, green, blue. Opposites of each other. I just hit the mic. Alright, so now we have to open up the properties of selective color. To open up the properties of any adjustment layer, just click on the icon. Double click on the icon. Now let's look over the interface of how it works and what it is. Let's understand them. Okay, so these are the presets that you might apply. Then one of the presets I'm going to give you that you can download. Links in the description, by the way. Now, these are the colors. Now, what are these? These are target colors. The colors that we are targeting. Now, reds. Red is selected. Now, whatever we do here happens to the reds in the image. For example, watch. It only affects the reds. So this just determines the selection. You can say that in a way that this just determines the selection and these are the modifications that we do to that selection. For example, now red is selected. So you want to increase the cyan on the selected area of reds. You want to increase or decrease the magenta. You might want to increase the yellow in that red area. So that's nothing but just a selection. This is a selection. These are the modifications. Okay, to reset any adjustment layer, click on this icon. All adjustments layer have it. All right. Now to increase the saturation, simple. Go to reds and increase the reds. Okay, to increase the reds, there are no red sliders. But remember what I taught you. Cyan is the opposite of red. C is the opposite of R. So decreasing the cyan would be increasing the reds. Okay, so all the way back to 100. Okay, let's go to the yellows. Increase the yellows. We have a yellow slider all the way to 100. That was minus 100. This one, this was 100. Okay. Greens. We don't have green. What's the opposite of green? Magenta. All the way down to minus 100. Next, cyans. Cyan. We have a cyan slider all the way to plus 100. Next, we have blues. We have a blue slider. No. What's the opposite of blue? Yellow all the way to minus 100. Next, what do we have? Magenta, we have a magenta slider? Yes, we do. All the way to plus 100. Now, let's create a preset of it. To create a preset, click on this icon, this grid kind of icon, and click on this and save selective color preset. Now you can save this preset. Let's save it, let's name it saturation. Okay, and save it any way you want to, locate it and save it. Now. You can select the presets that you want. Even if you have reset everything, you can go ahead and select the preset saturation. There you have it. So let's look at the before and after. So this is the before. This is the after. Look how natural the saturation is. Have a look. There's no pixel banding, no nothing, no pixelation, nothing. This is the most natural and you don't even have to worry about going overboard. For example, if you had added something like hue saturation and you would have increased the saturation, there's a point beyond which everything just goes ugly and there's a lot of pixel banding that you can see. Watch. Watch. Have a look here. This is not looking good. You don't want that to happen. This is oversaturation. So 
this is the most natural saturation that you'll ever get. See, none of that is happening here, okay? Also, one of the advantages of this is that you can always go ahead and click on the properties, double click on this, the properties will show up, and then you can even adjust. If you think the blue is too much, you can go to the blues and decrease the slider, there you go. Right? Isn't that amazing? If you want extra saturation from this, you can just double this up. So, control or command J, or to make a duplicate, you can also bring in, copy and drag and drop it here on the square just beside the dustbin. There you go. See, even now, when we have extra saturation, we don't have any kind of pixel banding here that we were seeing with hue saturation. Of course, if you want to decrease the saturation, you have the opacity. Opacity has always been our best friend. So, this is zero opacity. You want to increase the saturation. There you go. Isn't this beautiful? All right. So, let's make a group of both of these. Control or command G before, after. Have a look, isn't this amazing? All right, so let's move on to the next example where you might have to do a little bit of optimizations to this, okay? In this example, as you can see, this is a beautiful picture, but the image is a little dull. By the way, this image was submitted by Nut Peter Demons. So you can check out more of his work here. He is an awesome landscape photographer. Here also the first thing to do, create a selective color adjustment layer. And this time we don't have to do anything. Why? Because we have a preset. Okay, so select the preset saturation. There you go, it's done. Okay, now it might not be too much. Let's look at the before and after, before, after. Not too much. So let's make a copy of this. Okay, now once we have made a copy of this, we think that blue is too much. So what to do now? Easy, double click on the properties. Go to the blues and decrease it. Okay, done. What if you want more reds? Make another copy. Maybe, if you want more color, make another copy. And you think, see, watch, the red is clipping. The red is nice now, but the red is clipping. We don't want that. You can double click on it and go to reds and yellows. You might have to go to yellows and try decreasing it to the point where it's not clipping out. Watch. Now, this is good. Go to yellows and you might have to decrease this. Now, this is good. All right. So, let's quickly look at the before and after. So. Let's make a group of all of these three, control G, before, after, <laughs> makes loads of difference. Now there's a lot of pixel banding which you can see here, which you might have to go ahead and adjust, go to this color magenta, decrease it, and you get the idea what to do. Now let's move on to the third example where I will teach you an amazing tick, tick, tip that you will love. All right, so let's go ahead and do it really quickly. Let's close this image. Okay, I've already had them ready. Image number three, okay? So I just usually cut these things in my video after post-processing. So I just showed it for your reference. Okay, that's what I do. All right, so um, the background color is black and we don't quite like it. So let's make it gray, right click on it and let's make the canvas background dark gray. There you go, so that you can see it. Always keep a canvas background color which is contrasty with that of the image, okay? There was a pro tip there. Okay, so create another selective color layer. Same as before, maybe saturation. And there we have increased the saturation. But if you think the greens are very dark, here's what you can do. Now, this does not control the luminosity of the color, but this just controls the saturation of the color. To increase the luminosity, as I talked about it in my previous video, if you have watched yet, you will have the idea. Create another layer called this might sound uncanny, but create another layer called black and white. What? We were about... You're thinking, Mish, we're talking about increasing the saturation. What about black and white? What are you doing? Have you gone mad? No, let me show you what I really mean. Now, when you play with the sliders of this black and white, you see that the luminosity is affected, not the color. It controls the brightness of separate colors like reds, yellows, greens, and cyans. Now, we don't want this adjustment layer to affect the colors. We just want it to control the luminosity. So, what we would do? We would close the adjustment layer and change the blend mode to guess what? Luminosity. And there you go, you have the colors back. And if you think the green is dark, very dark, double click on the properties and increase the brightness of the greens. There you go. Now, if you think the green saturation is not too much, you can make a copy of the selective color. There you go. And you can increase the greens and decrease, bring everything to normal. This resets everything. Go to the greens and increase the greens, which means what's the opposite of green? Magenta. Decrease the magenta. There you go. More green. Isn't this amazing? So that's pretty much it for this video. That's how you increase saturation in the most natural, efficient, flexible, and non-destructive way. So hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also, not just subscribe. Click on that bell button so that you don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.